welcome back everyone to another video and in this one uh, I am kind of putting an end to the DIY uh, single board computer it's been a long time since I've been back on it uh, I've made some progress in the way so if no, if you've not seen the previous videos I'll leave a link in the description or at the end of the video so you can go ahead um, and go and see all the previous videos about this particular thing that's in front of you uh, this is a, a 1 gig ram 8 or 4 gig internal storage i don't remember i think it's 8 and then you have the rk3066 which is a dual core cortex a9 so it gets really hot and you need to take care of that uh, but it's a decent cpu for that day i think it had a mali 400 mp2 or something in there uh, which back in the day again was decent enough for games and it worked really well luckily has an hdmi port on there so a micro hdmi right there uh, and a usb hub which can also use for be used for rk flash now again this thing runs a standard chip uh, and I searched a lot for a while to see what Linux GNU distribution would run. Turns out Mars board, uh, I'll leave, uh, like have a picture of it right here, but Mars board are one of the vendors that use the same chipset and pretty much the same specification for their SBC and they have a few Debian images. Now the surprising thing is it's very perfect. Uh, in a way that you can fool anyone that this is an actual mass board of course not looking at it but running the software we'll take a look in a moment so I have the UART connected now I'm powering it using this particular doodad which is a 12 volt to whatever uh, DC to DC buck converter and that I'm feeding it 12 volts and it's spitting out 3.9 volts now the reason i do that this has sadly a kind of a check in place where if the battery isn't plugged in or the battery isn't present it wouldn't really boot and keep on going into the charging state so if i did not have that and i plugged it using a dc adapter it would uh, just boot to uh, a state where it just shows a battery logo uh, and just stay there uh, which is a problem so i kind of emulated a battery here and uh, this, so this is my virtual battery uh, and i'm fooling it to believe that there is in fact a battery whereas i have already removed it out of this tablet so that's about four minutes in uh, so let's go ahead and boot that up it's connected to my monitor let's go ahead and boot so all you need is a screwdriver to kind of shout out the buttons uh, because i removed everything from it and on the UART, which you cannot see sadly, uh, I would have liked everyone to see that, but that's how it is. Uh, it's booting Linux and on the screen, it should show up in a few seconds. And there it is. So that's the console uh, that just started the Mali MP uh, 400 GPU driver. So that kind of had a glitch there. Um, and I have my keyboard set up to the uh to my uh micro usb otg and from there i'll take my keyboard log in as mars board and enter so it's running proper debian or ubuntu linux so let's see what exactly is it running it's very old so it's not a very recent mars board build um, that would have issues. I'll zoom in onto the console so you guys can see. Um, so, cat etc OS release. Um, that's 14.04, so it's still not super old. But the kernel, on the other hand, is um, a different story. So, it's 3.0.36. It was compiled in 2016, which seems pretty recent, but the kernel itself is very old. Um, this should not probably be using that because of security and whatnot. But the other good thing is um, it the Wi-Fi works. So 
there we go um, so this is one of those weird builds where ping needs sudo but there we go we can ping a website and you can even see in ifconfig that it is actually connected to my home network and you can see the IP address and whatnot. Um, from there we can do uh, let's see um, let's open a website uh, there is chromium browser built in uh, let's take a quick look at uh, how much RAM is there uh, that's one gig about what I assumed um, and then we can even see cat prop uh, and CPU info. Oops. Um, so yeah, two uh, ARM V7 Cortex A9s. Of course, you can't see here. Uh, and then on something like edge top or just top, um, you can see the core two cores there. But um, yeah, so we can go ahead and visit. Uh, my website which comes up pretty nice and easy uh, let's wait for it to load so I'm, I definitely don't feel this as a slow single board computer uh, or like like super slow it's it's kind of laggy but it still works um, there, was, there is uh, for some reason a quick 3 file here which runs on the mp400 gpu which is pretty darn amazing and you can actually i'll, I'll run a demo i won't play it and um, let's see play can't load all right so let's see if we can run a single player game And yes, so it it works. Uh, the FPS doesn't seem to be super nice, but like it's always fun to play games on a hacked system. Um, again, this is running the proprietary Mali drivers, of course. So now you can see it shows you the FPS up top. So it's not that much. Again, Mali 400 MP wasn't a super powerful GPU by any means. But for some reason, like playing it, I cannot tell the difference if it's running at 20, 24 or in this case, um, 15. So you can see it pretty much works and I'm playing with a touchpad. So sorry about that. I hope the demo would have worked. We could do like a benchmark. That's how the demos work. But anyways, uh, that's I guess more or less what this video was about to kind of resurrect this tablet as a single board computer. Uh, I, I really like how it turned out to be. I would have definitely kind of like to you now run a 4.19 kernel. The SOC is supported and everything else is, so it's just a matter of um, having the time to set and build and set everything up. Um, yeah, so apart from that, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, this has been a content that I've put out fairly uh, after a fair bit of time. And um, yeah, I guess subscribe, like, share, press the bell icon and all of that stuff. And I'll see you all in the next one.